It is said that the death of a man or woman is not a single or momentary event. It is a process that takes place over a span of time. Your people, the Caucasian people, after a very long and very productive life, are dying. They are dying as they go to school, lesson by lesson, book by book, one young boy at a time, another young girl at a time, as he and she are nudged and conditioned towards homosexuality and lesbianism, rather than marriage and family. They are dying movie by movie, man by man, with yet another man that does not marry, another unborn baby, and another family that might have been. Some people choose to leave this life by way of suicide by cop, that is, suicide by police bullets. Your people are undergoing suicide by feminist. Yes, it is one feminist teacher after another, as yet another woman is brainwashed to be sterile, as she leaves no children to feed her in her old age, to grow the crops she needs to eat in her twilight years. And then she asks for a colored replacer and colonist to be brought in to grow the crops and collect the garbage. Your people are dying newspaper by newspaper, politician by politician, as these aliens, collaborators and traitors pump in another alien, another so-called immigrant, another so-called refugee, to take the place of a native white, replace them, and squeeze them out of their homes and resources. Today you are seeing some actual murders and rapes of your people in his homelands, as in the New Year's Eve molestation of women by so-called refugees in Cologne. Well, first white persons have been mind-raped, and it follows as a consequence that they will be physically raped. <laughs> However, the key point is that your people are not dying a natural death. The incremental fading of the white race is not a consequence of technology or prosperity, of the ease of travel and migration by way of aircraft, or of white people being too lazy to collect the garbage, to pick the berries and work in orange orchards. A group of people, who I shall refer to as the sneak rulers, <laughs> are engineering the process. The white race is not dying a natural death. It is being strangled, murdered. The murder of any ethnic group is genocide, and as a moral person, I, Frank Raymond, stand against it. Every life form, every species, every subspecies is unique and valuable. Another word for subspecies is breed or race. Each of them is a treasure. Each and every tribe of the Amazon is a treasure, irreplaceable. Similarly, the white tribe is a treasure, irreplaceable. I stand against the genocide of any race, hence I stand against the genocide of the white race. I stand with the Tibetan people, being genocided by the present Chinese regime. And I stand with the Caucasian race, presently being genocided by a power that controls the media and hence the minds of Caucasian people. Yeah. The Caucasians are being genocided first by the sneak rulers who have mind-raped them, subverted their nation-states, and opened wide their borders. They are the enemy within the gates, who have opened the gates of the city to the invaders and colonists. They have done it before, many times in history. They have worked at the genocide of the white people, at this genocide of the white peoples for at least two centuries. But, more recently, there has arisen a new breed of genocider, who are piggybacking on the sneak rulers. They parrot their idea viruses, they mouth their word weapons, word weapons such as racist and xenophobia. These new genociders are the more greedy and cunning individuals among the colonists. They aspire to seize and possess the white lands for their ethnicities, whether it's Chinese or East Indian or African, and they hypocritically preach and thunder about racism and white supremacism. Now you wonder what the aim is. What is the aim of the sneak rulers? The yeah. aim of the colonists is a simple one. They just want these green and pleasant lands, relatively empty lands. But what is the aim of the sneak rulers? The aim of the sneak rulers is to turn all the white lands, from North America to Europe to Australia and New Zealand, into a giant superstate. And this is now in embryonic form as the European Union. The superstate is to be populated by a mongrel mass of colored races and ruled by the sneaks. The sneaks are the greatest racists and racial oppressors on the face of the planet. They have an outlook, a vision, and a plan, a satanic plan. The view of the sneaks is this, their goal is this. They shall be the only fair-skinned and beautiful people on earth, a ruling class whose dominion will be naturally accepted by the ugly colored mongrels, who will be made mediocre 
due to mongrelization. The mongrel proles, and I use the word proles as in the sense of George Orwell's 1984. Right. The mongrel proles will live for bread alone with a few televised circuses. <laughs> that is the vision and outlook of the sneak rulers, and it requires the extermination, blending out, and replacement of the white peoples. But there is many a slip between the cup and the lip, and the sneaks may be killed off by one or more of the races and nations that they are importing into the West. We are seeing a historic phenomenon, the deliberate extinction of one of the four branches of humanity taking place over three continents. We are witnessing a historic first. For the first time, a people is being dispossessed of its land, colonized, replaced, and driven to extinction, not by weapons and armies, but by mind control, by being driven to insanity. The sneak rulers are also mind masters. They have transformed the white person into a lemming, running to the cliff edge to ju jump and fall and die. Many whites, known as white liberals, have been trained to beg for their own dispossession and the death of their people, and they do so. They beg. Now, whites have been indoctrinated to believe that they have no value, no uniqueness, no identity as a racial group. Yeah. They are told that they are members of the human species, but not members of any racial group within it. The white race does not exist, since races do not exist. So runs the politically correct dogma. As such, they say, a white man or woman would lose nothing if his Sweden or his Canada were peopled entirely by Africans. They say he would feel at home among them. I am among my fellow humans, a liberal would say, <laughs> in an apartment building in a city peopled fully by Somalis. On the other hand, and to the contrary, a white person is told that he does have an identity. He does belong to a group. He does belong to a race. Ah, it's a bad one. He's a slaver who flogged slaves in, plant, in cotton plantations, an imperialist who built his country's prosperity by robbing Africans and Asians. On the movie screen and TV screen, on the advertisements, the white is the worthless man or woman. Most often, he's a worthless man, a worthless male. He's weak, indecisive, shifty, criminal, a follower, not a leader, treacherous and spineless. On the very few occasions in which, on which a, male, a white male is strong, he's evil. The only yeah. strong white male man is an evil white man. <laughs> True. But now we come to what I have been writing about. But do whites have no unique, different qualities as a race, as a breed, as a subspecies? Could they be happy living among aliens in an alien majority or alien accommodating society? Would they lose nothing? Would the world lose nothing? Consider, white men and women like crossword puzzles. People of other races do not do crosswords, even after generations of living in white societies and white cultures. They don't hold dog shows. <laughs> They don't do bird watching. If or rather, when Vancouver becomes a Chinese city, the few whites left will not have crossword puzzles to amuse themselves with, will not be able to organize dog shows, and will certainly not be able to do any bird watching. Now, how many parts whites know about these aspects of their identity, these unique aspects of their unique identity? And right. they will have to read Chinese language newspapers, not English ones. That's just the way it goes when you've been colonized. However, the identity, the happiness, and the spiritual fulfillment of a people goes deeper than crossword puzzles and dog shows. It goes deeper even than language. For example, you will notice that um, in the hospitals, um, they collect teddy bears. And they collect teddy bears and give them to the elderly aging patients. And I've often seen in a hospital an old man on a gurney or in a wheelchair holding on to a teddy bear mm -hmm. here in Canada. But a colored person would see that as a sign of childishness, as a streak of insanity. So what will happen when colored people are setting the tone of society, as they're doing more and more, they will laugh at these men and those old white men will refrain from hanging on to that teddy bear. He will not dare to treasure and hold on to that teddy bear because he'll be daunted by the laughter and the mocking. However, the teddy bear is only one outward symptom of something very deep and fundamental indeed. The happiness and spiritual fulfillment of a people reach into the innermost yearnings and the psychic core of a people, into its very soul. And that is what my book explores.
to a large extent. Identity, spirituality, soul. Mm -hmm. Whites will lose that which they hold most precious as they lose more of their lands and cease to have neighborhoods, streets, schools, community halls, and community meetings of their own people, of their own kind. They will lose, they are already losing, the green spaces, the green strips in the cities, the majestic forests that they so cherish. For the white mind is a forest mind, a mind that dwells in the forest, the forest fringed by the changing sea. They will lose all that because they have lost the right of any ethnic group, any racial group, the right of self-determination. They will lose their very souls. And the world will lose much of what enriches it. It will lose the only race that is struggling to save animals, plants, the ecological system, and nature itself, as the human species continues to foul its tiny nest. Life on the planet, the very continuation of life on the planet, now depends on the survival of the white race and on its resistance to the genociders. <laughs> wow. That's my opening statement. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. I mean, 